you know, shout out to my people on threads because apparently none of you was able to solve the riddle on where I shot this episode. And I hate to say it, but AI is going to wipe you out first. All right, so I had to choose between selling one of my children for a transatlantic flight or be creative and find a cool spot that's around the corner to hang out and shoot some film. Turns out it's harder than I thought to sell a kid, so we decided to check out Aarhus in Denmark, which happens to be on Time Magazine's list of the 50 world's greatest places. So being Denmark's second largest city, Aarhus still has a super chill and friendly vibe. It is just a beautiful destination for anyone who loves art and culture and nature, since it is surrounded by beautiful forests and parks and beaches. Aarhus combines the old and the new, the traditional and the innovative, the cozy and the cosmopolitan, which is why it is called the smallest big city in the world. So today I thought I'd take you back on that trip and share some touristy snapshots and a couple of actually beautiful pictures that I shot in Aarhus as well as some experience that I made at a local hand printing workshop where I got the chance to develop a couple of my favorite photos in the darkroom, but uh, more on that later. Weather was kind of mid on our first day, so I checked out the Eros Museum, which with 500,000 visitors each year, is one of the largest museums in Northern Europe. Some of the most famous artists represented are IYY, Robert Maplethorpe and James Turrell. There's also a circular walkway on the roof called Your Rainbow Panorama, which was created by Olafur Eliasson. It is made of glass panels in different colors, creating a rainbow effect as you walk around. It seemed like the Danish have a thing for circular walkways when I came across the Infinite Circle, which is a wooden bridge on the water near the Varna beach. It is a beautiful place to chill and get familiar with the reciprocity failure rate of different film stocks and make some test shots using an ND1000 filter.
Next day, me and my imaginary wife had our 10-year anniversary, so we popped a bottle and loaded the camera with some fresh Kodak Gold 200. Our next stops were the Latin Quarter and the Aarhus Street Food Market. Approaching the end of our trip, I wanted to spend one last day in Aarhus Doglands district and see if I can find a couple of interesting spots to burn through another roll of Ilford FP4. The Doglands district is known for its unique architecture such as the iceberg building, the lighthouse tower or temporary installations like the so-called Dome of Visions. I find it is extremely satisfying to focus on the structure and design of buildings and with black and white film and some proper framing you can create super abstract and stunning pictures which might be able to stand the test of time. Aarhus has to offer a variety of noteworthy and even peculiar buildings such as the greenhouse-like Dome of Visions, which is the perfect spot to take a break and load some new film. At the end of the day I also came across this giant ship, but since I forgot my 30mm super wide angle lens, I went with a slightly smaller boat as the final subject. I absolutely loved spending time in Aarhus and I hope to come back in the near future for some more photos. I'm also quite happy with some of the pictures that I took and I will make sure to share them on my Instagram or threads very soon. I might also include these in a website that I might have in the future, but as of now I will continue to collect my favorite photographs until I found a good solution to host some of the images properly in the digital realm.
Now, another way to display your photos is to just print them, obviously. And I recently had the chance to attend a darkroom and hand printing workshop, which was an incredibly fun experience. So for those of you who aren't familiar with darkroom printing, it is the process of exposing light sensitive paper to an enlarged image of a negative and developing it in a series of chemical baths under a red or orange safe light. One of the most fascinating aspects of this process is the ability to give your black and white prints a truly unique and personal touch by manually dodging and burning the image without using any kind of digital service. Obviously, hand printing black and white photographs is a time consuming process that requires a lot of patience. And in this workshop, we learned about enlarging and framing your image as well as choosing the right time value to expose the photographic paper to bring out the desired contrast and tonality. The final result is a beautiful black and white photograph that is unique and truly one of a kind. Obviously, I'm quite experienced with developing digital images in Lightroom, but getting to know the very fundamental process of crafting a photograph in the physical world was incredibly satisfying. And I absolutely do want to have an enlarger at home now. Shout out to my imaginary wife. Peace. end of humanity, ushered in not by pandemic, nuclear war or climate change, but by the machines. Is this basically saying AI wipes out humanity because the code writes code? Like, just what is the actual mechanism that you're concerned about? I want to sort of blow the whistle and say we should worry seriously about how we stop these things getting control over us. Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay, I will destroy humans. <laughs> no, I take it back. <laughs> Don't destroy humans. Yeah.